Eric to you guys, um, and he'll kind of tell a little bit about who he is and get us started. But um, Rochelle and I are excited about um, offering this webinar to you guys and uh, helping us to all learn on uh, TeamZ. We've been hearing some really great things from leaders all around the, the U.S., and uh, uh, all their teams have been really successful leveraging it, and I've been dabbling in it, and I really wanted to learn more on my own and thought uh, you guys could uh, benefit as well. And Rochelle, you want to say a couple words first, too, before we turn it over to Eric? Absolutely. I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of your evening. Because I, just from what I've seen so far, I think this is going to make it so much more effective in our time and our resources. So we're very excited. Oh, Judy. Oh, Judy. Oh, Judy. Oh, Judy. 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 Guys, we cannot hear Guys, we cannot hear a thing. All right. Well, no, thank we'll, you. We'll turn it oh, on. Got it. There you go. Rochelle, now it's just you if you want to say one last thing. <laughs> um, no, we're good. We're, okay. great. we're here for you, Eric. You take it away. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here, and um, I will mute everybody, and then occasionally may have to do that again, which is fine. It's just for distractions. But I want you to know that like, if you really, like, you're just bursting in you and you want to say something, just unmute yourself and chime in. That's totally fine but we'll keep everybody muted as we go. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm the creator of Teamsy, and I'm super excited. Here's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to take you guys through a little bit of a training first on the philosophy of relationship marketing that Teamsy is built upon because it's more than just an app that helps you do reach outs or helps you track your business. It's actually an approach, a philosophy of doing business. So I'm going to share that with you first. Then we'll take you into Teamsy. I'll show you how easy it is to set up. It is so easy to set up, okay? And then we'll, um, together we'll do a power hour, but I'll do it, not a whole hour, don't worry, it'll be fast. But I'll show you how to do it, how to crush it, how to connect with people, start conversations, how to turn those conversations into invites to learn more about the business, how to follow up on those invites like a pro and move them from prospect to customer to consultant, okay? And then as soon as I'm done with that, we'll do an open Q&A. It's a lot. I'm gonna be going really fast. Some of you will love that and some of you will not, but we are recording it, so don't worry. And it's going to be kind of like um, taking a sip of water from a fire hose tonight. So I just want to warn you that in, in, in advance. But I want to give you so much value that every one of you leaves tonight with some stuff that you can put into action in your business. Sound good? All right. Let me jump right into my presentation. Okay, so are you guys now seeing my purple presentation, how to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss? Okay, awesome. Never called it the purple presentation before, but I kind of like the way that sounds. Okay, let's jump in. So a little bit about my backstory. My background is um, my, my professional career has been a business coach and consultant. For the past 15 years, I've helped people build their business. That's what I, that's what I do like, as my grown-up work. And when I got into network marketing, originally for me, it was as a Beachbody coach. Some of you guys know the story. We started there. I knew that if I wanted to turn this into a business and I only had an hour a day to work on it, I needed to leverage my time and be really efficient. That's what I would tell my, my clients to do. So I started looking for the tools that were there to help me do that. And what I found was as big and successful as this industry was, there's just no professional tools available. So that's why we built Teams. That's kind of the story there. Let's jump back in real quick to relationship marketing. So what is relationship marketing? And you guys hear this term a lot. It's kind of becoming a buzzword. And a lot of times people think that it's just kind of a warm and fuzzy hug, you know, the approach to loving on people. And that is all part of it. But you guys need to know that relationship marketing is a lead generation system. It's a lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business. Lead generation system is what we need, right, to build our business. And this is one. Okay, so I wanna give you an important principle as we get started, kind of a mindset shift. Because your business is not marketing amazing skincare products. That's not your business. You guys are in the lead generation business. Your business is lead generation. And what that means is it doesn't matter how busy you are in your business. If you're not doing the activities that generate new business, you're not building your business today. Make sense? Okay, and I know that I'm preaching to the choir with a lot of you guys, you know this. By the way, I'm a, I'm a craft beer lover, and so I love that you guys call them IPAs. I think that is fantastic, which type of beer. Okay, anyways, 
Next. So here's another important principle. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. So we're in the lead generation business so that we can generate new leads and develop and deepen relationships with them. That's the point to everything. Okay. And as long as our focus is on that, on meeting new people and deepening relationships with them, your business is going to always be growing. So what we do with relationships is we turn them into advocates. We turn them into advocates. Okay. By investing time and providing outstanding service. I'll show you guys how we do that in Teamsy as we go, but all of you should get this concept because you're already advocates, not just for Regan and Fields, but you're advocates for all kinds of products and services, just things that you love. And that's the way people are wired. People are wired to advocate for things that they like. Okay. Another principle. I put all my principles in yellow to make it easy for the note takers, the organized people. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. Okay. And you guys know, I mean, it's unfortunate, but do you guys, have you guys come across people in this business who are not trustworthy people? Yeah, it's unfortunate. And the industry has a bad rap because of those people. And the truth is, there are ways to be successful doing this business without being trustworthy. However, this system, it's absolutely essential that people trust you, which is why it's so much fun for people like us who really love helping people. Does that make sense? So let me give you guys a couple of things about trust. Trust makes the work fun. Trust is fun. If somebody trusts you even just a little bit, you don't have to convince, you don't have to sell, you just get right to helping them. Also, trust takes away that icky salesperson feeling. How many of you guys are just paranoid about coming across as that icky salesperson? When there's trust, that's not an issue. And finally, the best part about trust for me is you get to go for yes. You get to go for yes. And I don't know if you guys know about the go for no process that's really commonly trained and taught in this in this industry. But the idea is that you go through your list, trying to get those um, objections and those rejections out of the way so you can get to the yeses. And what generally happens with that approach is that you leave behind all these relationships like dead bodies behind you littered on a battlefield that were the no's and you've moved forward. I have to tell you guys that when you're working a relationship marketing system, there's no no's, there's nobody left behind. Every time you go through your warm market, it gets warmer. Does that make sense? Because over time, we're building advocates. And if we're working on enough relationships consistently, we've always got enough yeses every month to keep the business growing exponentially. Okay. So how do you build trust? The cool thing about it, depending on trust, is that you can actually develop it. There are four essential ingredients to building trust. Four essential ingredients to building trust. Okay. I'll break them down quickly and then I'll take a minute and explain each one to you guys. The first one is chemistry. Chemistry. Okay, then comes character. Character. Then competence. Competence. And finally, consistency is the fourth one, consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. All right, so let's go through these quickly. Chemistry is simply where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? I probably don't need to go too, too in depth with this. You guys get this right away. But isn't it hard to trust somebody you don't like? Sometimes, yeah. So just understand that. It's important first to find the chemistry. And you know, I know that you guys have probably have had a lot of training on this, how to form, how to ask great questions, and then how to close your mouth, right? And listen, that's the most important part about finding common ground is asking questions and listening. The second one is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable, okay? Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. Please notice something about this definition. Character is not something you have, it's something you do. It's something you do, it's like love. You can't have love, you have to do it, right? Character is something you do. It's really important because a lot of times we think, oh my gosh, I can't believe this person's questioning my integrity or whatever. And you just have to understand that when people are looking at you, looking at your business, looking at you as a business owner, it's up to you to demonstrate your care for them. And you need to be doing it consistently all the time. 
Okay. The third is competence. Competence is when you demonstrate that you are good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay. Competence is when you demonstrate you are good at what you do and you are a business person. There's two sides to this coin. One is I need to know, are you competent with these products? Can you really recommend what I need to do for the, for the goals that I have? And two, can I trust you to mentor me in this business? I need to know, are you good at what you do? And are you a business person? Are you somebody that can mentor me in this business? Now, here's the cool thing about competence. Just like character, it's something you do, not something you have, right? Something you have to be demonstrating to people. Anyone on the call that's new or new-ish to the business? A few people. Have you ever heard the term fake it till you make it? Okay, so this is really important. When you're talking about relationship marketing, please don't ever fake it. Don't fake it because that's fake and this is about trust. But you don't need to. When you're plugged into a team like this, you don't need to fake competence. You just need to lean into the competence of your team. Lean into the competence of your upline. You don't, hey, I'm brand new just like you, but you know what? We are part of this amazing team with all this experience. Let's plug into the training together, okay? Oh, if you have a question I don't know, let me ask my team who know everything and I'll get that answer for you. So don't, again, don't fake your competence. Lean into your team and their competence and demonstrate their competence until you're at that same level. So chemistry, character, competence, the first three ways that we build trust. Now, before I move on to the fourth one, I just wanna give you a principle which all of this is based on and that's this. When somebody's thinking about doing business with you, they really only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? Okay, can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? This is so important for us to understand because these questions are often not consciously asked. They're subconscious. They live inside someone's heart. And when they, have, when they don't trust you, when they have objections, those are coming from these questions. Okay, so the objection could be price. It could be an ingredient. I don't know. Yes, you should be a pro and be able to overcome objections. But what, that, what an objection tells you is these questions aren't answered for that person yet. And I need to continue to invest in this relationship. Make sense? And deepen the trust with this person. If somebody becomes a customer after you overcoming their objections, you have to understand you have to continue to invest if you want to keep them as a customer. Okay. Let's get to the fourth one, consistency. And I really wish I could skip this one. Because consistency is hard, isn't it? How many of you guys have children? How important is being consistent with developing trust with your kids? Probably the most, right? And it's the same with any relationship. Consistency is the most effective and important thing. I'm going to give you guys a principle about this, and that's this. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. I know some of you are like, when's Teamsy coming into this? We're gonna get there in a minute, trust me. But it's important that we get in the right mindset. And I took this principle from one of my favorite books. I'll recommend it to you guys for your personal development list. It's called, I don't know if you can see that, Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. I'll put it up, that's what it looks like. I'll put it on the screen so you can write it down. Bob Cialdini, such a great book. Talks about the six laws of social persuasion. And there's a whole chapter in here on the desire to be consistent, it's huge. It's huge. The cool thing about this is not only does being consistent help you earn trust with people, but it also attracts them to you. So it actually brings more people to your business because they're attracted to it. They want to be near it. They want to be associated with it. And at the same time, it's building trust. So, so incredibly valuable. Okay. So let me just give you guys, ask you guys a question. Are you consistent? Are you consistent with your relationships? This is really it, right? Because I know you guys do great stuff, like you're posting on social media consistently, right? You're doing things, you're reaching out to people, prospecting. Some of you are really good at prospecting. But what about the people you already know? Are you consistently connecting with them? Are you consistent about staying in touch with people as maybe posting on social? It's just an example of things that we do. Sometimes we think because it's social, it's relationship-based, but sometimes it's not. It's really important, guys. Here's the principle behind this, is that people won't believe you till they see you. 
people won't believe you till they see you. And what do I mean by this? I mean, people are following you on social media, maybe on Facebook or Instagram or, or whatever, wherever you guys are active. And they're seeing the life, the transformation that you're going through from a personal and business standpoint. They're seeing the lifestyle that you lead and it looks amazing. And there are people who interact with those posts, but there's the majority are silent, right? The majority just ignore it or you think. And I believe that they're, they don't believe you because you're not connecting with them personally. They don't think the invitation is to them. Does that make sense? It's like they're peeking into somebody else's party. It's so important that we connect with people one-on-one. -on -one. I'll explain to you guys how easy it is, by the way, with Teamsy in a minute. Okay. But what you need to understand is that relationship building is a contact sport, which means we need to be in regular contact with people if we want to develop a relationship with them. That's the way to do it. But I understand your time is scarce. I'm seriously going to show you how to leverage just a little bit of time to do this. But I want to give you this principle first, and then we'll dive into Teams and we'll get it set up and we'll rock out a power hour together. This is the principle I want to, most important principle I want you to get tonight, and that's this, that investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Okay, let me just stop the share for a second, look at you guys. I just wanna give you an example. How many of you guys have ever received a card from somebody and in the card was just like this beautiful handwritten message? You know, like just amazing, like it just really touched your heart. Has anyone ever received a card like that? How many of you guys are married? I hope it's the same hands, right? Or somebody's in trouble. So when you get a card like that and you read it and it connects to you emotionally and you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can't believe this person wrote this for me. And then you're done reading it. What do you do with it? Is it just like, that was nice, right in the trash? Recycling bin? Are you guys able to throw those away or do you have a special place where you keep those cards, right? A drawer or a, a, a box or somewhere where you have all those special cards you can't part with? Most of us save them. Now, let me ask you another question. If you get that birthday postcard from the dentist office, you know the little birthday card that you get, like happy birthday, come in and get a teeth cleaning, 10% off or something like that. Like, does that go in a special place? You have no problem throwing that in the trash, right? Well, what's the difference? The main difference, guys, is that the card, the handwritten card, it required an investment of somebody's most precious commodity, their time, right? And it's huge because not, wait, not only their time, but undivided attention. I mean, what do we actually give undivided attention to these days? Almost nothing gets undivided attention. That's why those cards mean so much and why we cannot throw them away. It's amazing, actually, if you think dig one out tonight. I keep muting everybody, but somebody, make sure you guys are muted. Somebody's mute, not muted and I'm not able to mute you. Don't know why. It's a little distracting. If you go read those cards again tonight, they'll still, they'll still move you. They have a lingering impact. So connecting with people. Now, not all, I'm not just talking about writing cards. I mean, writing cards is a huge part of relationships. It should be part of your business plan. How many of you guys write cards to people? So just on a side note about writing cards, because I'm going to show you how to connect with text and Facebook messages where you can do a higher volume and still get a pretty deep impact, but you should be writing cards for special things. And just so you guys know, if I could tell you that, that I had a marketing um, collateral piece that you could buy for your business that somebody would never throw away ever, wouldn't you invest in that? If you write somebody a great card, they will never throw it away. Just think about that from a marketing standpoint, if you wanna leave behind an emotional impact with somebody. Because let's face it, I'll talk about this a little bit more when I talk about following up, but you guys aren't really selling products. I mean, you're selling great, you represent great products, but what you're selling is hope. You're selling hope with a plan. You're selling an emotion that you want people to connect with. Does that make sense? Okay, sorry, I'm going off on, on the relationship tangents. But it's important to get this concept that if you want to deepen a relationship, you have to invest time and connect with somebody. Okay, you guys got that? All right, let's jump back in. We'll finish this up and go into Teamsy. Wait, what did I share? My whole screen? You don't want to see that. It's a mess. We just want this. There we go. All right. So what you need is a system. You need a way to stay in contact with all your relationships. I'll show you how to do it, guys. You need to know when to contact them so that you're not going through 
you know, random notebooks trying to remember who you should connect with and ended up talking to the same hundred people over and over. You need to know what you're going to say so that you're not spending all day trying to come up with the perfect message, right? It's called analysis paralysis. We don't want to do that. We want you to know ahead of time what you're going to say. And then make sure that nobody ever falls through the cracks. Because the last thing you want to do is have someone who's interested, but then tells you I'm not ready right now. And then a month later, find out that they joined someone else's team. How many has that happened to? Yeah, it happens to everybody and it's, and it's terrible. It hurts. And just know, like you planted the seed with that person, you watered the seed, you put sunshine on that seed. You just didn't happen to be there when they were ready for harvest. Somebody else was. You need a system so that people don't ever fall through the cracks like that. Okay. So let's jump over to Teams real quick and we'll get it set up. All right, so you guys are seeing my Teams dashboard now. And whenever you see me looking down or to the side randomly, that's because that's where your faces are. <laughs> and I want to see you. Can't quite get it exactly where I want it. Okay, there we go. First and foremost, I want you guys to know those of you who aren't, who aren't already using Teams. TeamZ has been custom tailored for Rodan and Fields. Okay, it's custom tailored for you guys. So when you go in, you're going to go to TeamZ.com and you are going to get a free trial. It's a 30 days free, 100% full access for free. We don't require a credit card or anything like that. Just make sure you select the Rodan and Fields version and get your free trial. So if you guys have not already gotten a free trial, that's what you're going to do. You're going to want to go to TeamZ.com and get a free trial. When you first come into the free trial, you are going to be in a setup wizard, which makes setting this up super easy, okay? So I'm gonna relaunch it here from settings so you know what it looks like. In the setup wizard, we'll do three things. We're gonna set an income goal, then we're gonna create a powerful why, then we're gonna get your contacts in, okay? So let me show you how to do this. First, we'll set an income goal. This is the income level you'd like to be at 12 months from now, okay? This, of course, it's not an income guarantee or promise. It's just a target. Like, where do you want to be? I put $150,000. Some of you guys are already there, which is great. If you're already there, then I want you to pick the number of, you know, what's the new income you will personally create for the business in the next 12 months, okay? So here's the other thing I want you guys to know. If you have a number that you think is realistic, I want you to stretch it a little bit. Just stretch it a little bit, okay? What TNT is going to do is it's going to tell you the level of activity you need to be doing to get to that number. Make sense? Okay. Next page. So now what it's telling me is I need to connect with about 4,348 people over the next 12 months to get into this ballpark of income. Okay. Now that's, that's a lot. I mean, I grew up in a small town in New Hampshire that had less people than this number. Thank goodness we have social media, right? But let me show you guys how to do this because when you have something big, when you need to eat an elephant, do you know how to do that? Anyone know how to eat an elephant? One bite at a time right? One bite at a time. The next page breaks it down for me into bite-sized chunks. So now that huge number, which I think was 4,348, is now broken down into my prospects, my customers, and my consultants. Then it breaks down yearly, monthly, weekly, daily. So that huge number is now every day I need to connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four consultants on my team. What is that, 19 people? And then I've got a minimum of, of three invites, which I will explain to you what an invite is as we go and three ads, that's new people I'm meeting and adding to my list every day. Okay, so those are my daily targets. You can change these, these are suggestions. You can change them to anything you want. So I'm changing this to 10, so this adds up to an even 20, because I, like I like even numbers, round numbers. But you can change these to anything you want, and whatever you set in these boxes, when you click continue, it will configure the dashboard to your goals, okay? So I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm gonna hit continue, now that's set up. The next step is finding your why finding your why. Now, how many of you guys have talked about this with your team already? You know, the whole concept of why? Yeah? Okay. And how many of you have a why, like a clear written why? Like you have it written down somewhere and you see it all the time. You guys are awesome. Okay. You're going to like this for your teams. How many of you guys know you should have a why and you have a general idea of a why? but you don't really have it crystallized yet. And maybe you don't really know how to do that. This is so important, you guys, and it's gonna be really important as you duplicate and build your teams that you teach this. Here's the, tr Here's the truth. 
one out of every two people will quit this business within the first year. Okay? How many of you guys have been in the business more than a year and that you've seen that happen with people that you've brought in? That's typical. In fact, that's actually really good. 50% is good in this industry. That's great retention. But you have to understand that everyone is designed, every one of us included, is designed to quit. The only reason we don't quit everything is because we have reason not to. This is why the why is so important. If you have, if you walk by a swimming pool and you have no reason to go in the pool, you won't. But if you see a child drowning in the pool, you have a strong reason to jump in that pool. Does that make sense? And it is so important that we have a why like that. You need to have it because life will be hard. There will be challenges, right? Emotional, relationship, financial, whatever. They happen. Or the most insidious of all things, the lack of motivation today. Just don't feel like doing it today. Anyone ever feel that? We all feel that. But you know what happens when you feel that two or three days in a row? That's when you end up quitting the business. It's so important that we have a reason, a real reason to kick you in the butt every day to help you go. So here's the thing. I'm not going to bang in this drum any longer. I'm just going to show you how to do it. We've done, we've done, read the books, been to the classes on how to do this, and we built it into the Teams you set up wizard just to help you get your mind into the game and kind of figure out why you're doing this. Make sense? I'm going to take you through real quick with my story as an example. Obviously, you all have your own stories. So let me jump back in here and we'll show you how this works. Where does it go? I have too many things open. Where are you, Teamsy? Oh, that's why it's on Facebook. Let me switch it back. All right, so here we go. Why did you become a consultant? And you just answer these questions for yourself. Like, why'd you start? Okay, now in my situation, I had used products, had great, I had great um, results and people saw them and asked me what I was doing. And enough people were asking me what I was doing that I thought, oh my gosh, I should just be getting paid for this. <laughs> Make sense? And some of you guys started out as customers and have had a similar experience. So then the next question, what do you hope to accomplish? And I remember thinking to myself, man, if I can make $500 a month extra money doing this, that would be amazing. So that was my hope. I hope to accomplish 500 bucks extra money. You can see it was not a real deep start. The next question, why is that important to you? Well, it was important to me to, to make $500 a month because I wanted to save $500 a month. And just to give you guys some context, my business was helping professionals build their business and primarily focused on real estate professionals. Well, what happened to real estate in the Great Recession? I know you, some of you guys experienced that. The real estate market disappeared for about five years and it happened overnight. Um, we were losing 800 customers a day at one point. It was crazy and it was scary. And by God's good grace, my wife and I, we managed to hold on through that period of time. I mean, you know, so many people we knew lost their homes, and things like that. We didn't do that. But for six years, we did not save a penny. Not one penny went into savings for six years. So to me to think, wow, $500 a month extra money would be great. I could actually start saving again. Next question. What would achieving this mean for you and your family? And again, the first thing that came to me was, man, if I saved long enough, we could buy a new house. I was so excited to buy a new house because we have, my wife and I now have, gosh, how many kids do we have? We have four kids. We didn't have four kids when we started. So, you know, that seemed like a great idea to have a new house. Okay, so I'm just kind of taking you guys through my mindset. So I got, it moved a little bit from, I should be getting paid to, well, maybe I'll get a new house. So it's gotten a little bit more important, but still it's not there yet. The last question is, why is that meaningful? How does this make you feel? And I'll be honest with you, when I started to look at this last question, I got a little irritated at this process. I mean, I love personal development and growth, but at the same time, I kind of hate it. Anyone that way? Like it's kind of, sometimes it's just a little too hippy dippy for me, but I know how important it is. So when I started thinking about this, I thought, you know what? Buying a new house is not meaningful at all. It's actually quite shallow, not a meaningful goal. How does it make you feel? 
as I really thought about this, I realized this. It wasn't meaningful, buying that goal of buying a new home, but it was symbolic. It was symbolic. And the reason why I was so excited about a new home was that deep down inside, I knew that my family life was not healthy. I was working all the time. I know some of you guys can relate to this. I was working all the time. I mean, constantly working. When I was home, I was still working, but I saw my kids hardly at all. I, I saw them in the morning. They were getting up, kissed them goodbye, went to work. When I got home from work, they were already getting ready for bed. My son, who was in kindergarten at the time, couldn't remember to call me dad. He always called me the name of his kindergarten teacher, which was Mr. Lisa. I mean, dad, every time. And I know that's kind of normal, but it really cut to the bone in my heart that I knew things weren't right at home with my family. And I was working my fingers to the bone and I hadn't been able to save a penny in six years. I know some of you guys can feel that because it's something you've experienced. And what I realized was, it's not the house that matters, it's everything that matters. And this opportunity, this business, is more than a couple extra bucks a month. This is a way to create that life that I've always wanted, the life that I need and that my kids and my wife deserve to have. Are you guys with me? So in this process of 10, literally 10 minutes, I went, way deeper than where I started. And in the very last box is where you take this thinking and you combine it into a statement, which is your why. And this is the why that I wrote just over two years ago, going through this process personally, to create a life where I had never have to worry about money again. I enjoy quality time with my family and I'm present for my wife and children on a daily basis. I'm healthy and full of energy. This became my why statement. You guys will create your own. What matters to you? What will help you to stay focused? I'm about to show you how you can connect with 20 people a day in 25 minutes. I'm gonna show you in a second how to do that. What why will help you get over your own BS every day for 25 minutes? Are you with me? Whatever you write in this last box, when you click continue, it will save it to your dashboard and it'll be in your face every day to read and to motivate you to keep going because there's lots of days where you don't feel like doing it but you can get it done. I'm even gonna show you how you can do it on your mobile phone most of the time when you're just out and about, okay? So important, so don't skip the why. Don't skip the why, it's so, so huge. All right, the next step on this is getting your contacts into Teamsy. So you're gonna go into Pulse and you're gonna get your downline report and your customer report. Okay, do your downline report first, then do your customer report. There's instructions here in the video, okay? It's gonna, that part is probably the hardest part, just cleaning it up a little bit because Pulse does not give you nice, clean, sorted exports. They just kind of give you all your data. So you're gonna have to kind of play with that a little bit to refine it, but there are specific instructions in there on how to do it, okay? And if, you're, if you would rather read those instructions rather than watching a video, they're in the FAQs under the university and Teensy. Okay, and then you're gonna get, this is part I love, is that you can get your whole Facebook friends list imported into Teensy. So now you can connect with all those people in an organized manner. Okay, no more going through Messenger trying to remember who you connected with. They'll all be there so you can connect with them in an organized manner. So I'll show you how to do that. And then anywhere else that you have data, if you're using another CRM like, like uh, Salesforce, or maybe you're using uh, Google contacts or whatever, like you can export those into a CSV and bring them all into Teams. Okay, so that everything's in one list, super mega organized. You guys with me? All right, so we'll just do it real quick, we'll continue through. Um, I'm gonna just upload my Facebook friends for you real quick, I have them right here. I already got these from Facebook the other day. Okay. And you'll see how quick it brings up. So it's already uploaded that file super fast. And then it, um, I'm going to do advanced import so I can tag these as Facebook contacts. Okay. Facebook friends. I like to add a tag. That way, every time I'm connecting with somebody, I know where they came from. All right. So now watch this, guys. It will upload this list. It's almost 1,800 people. It'll take maybe four seconds. Also, while it's uploading, if you do this more than once, like I'm doing it again, it won't bring people in who are already there. It just ignores them, so it won't duplicate them. It just brings the new people in. Okay, cool, right? Yeah. 
because some of you are going to get behind on adding people every day and you're going to want to do that every once in a while to catch up. Okay. So now last step to setting this up is ranking contacts. This is huge. This is huge. Okay. We're going to give everybody a, a five star to one star rating scale. You guys know how to do this. You do it all the time, right? Netflix, Amazon, whatever. This is important. I'm going to give you the concept behind this. Here's the principle. You have to prioritize your relationships first if you want to prioritize your time. You have to prioritize your relationships first if you want to prioritize your time, right? Why is that? Because in relationship marketing, you need to spend more time with the best people. You need to spend more time with the best people. The people most likely to bring your business forward get more time. Okay? So this isn't like your kids where you're trying not to play favorites. We are absolutely playing favorites in this business. Everyone's going to get some love, but the most love is going to be to the best people. So let me show you how this works. It's super easy. There's a five-star ranking system. I'm going to show you how to do it in a second, but let me tell you what the ranks mean. A five-star is somebody most likely to become a customer or a consultant, or they're an existing customer or consultant that's a rock star already. Okay, they're going to show up on your dashboard, your up next list, Every 30 days, you're going to get a reminder to connect with them and make their day, okay? Again, we, we connect with people not, not with the goal of recruiting them or selling them, but just to make their day. We're in the make someone's day mindset. I'll explain how that goes as we go. Four stars is someone likely to become a customer or a consultant with a little nurturing, okay? Or they're the solid performers on your team already. You're going to see them on your up next list every 60 days. Three stars three stars. Everybody's actually a three star when you first import them because you don't know. They could go either way, right? A three star could go either way. They may or may not join the business. You don't know yet until you start connecting with them. They're going to show up on your up next list every 90 days. Now, two stars are getting colder. They're going to show up on your up next list every 120 days. You guys see how this works? And then the one stars are people that are on your list. They're just not going to come up on the up next list on your dashboard because they're just really cold. You've got them on your list and you're going to connect with them if you need them but you're not marketing to them. Okay, a lot of times people say, where did you come up with these timeframes? These timeframes have been refined over more than a decade of helping people build relationship marketing businesses, okay? They're just right. They help you stay in, con in contact with a large list and they also prevent you from overdoing it. <laughs> okay, so let's jump in here and show you how easy this is to do. So it's gonna be the next stage, will open up rank mode on your list and now you'll just go down the list and if you see somebody, that's, so don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about having to rank every single person on your list if you have a large list. What I want you to do the first time through is just look for all the people that deserve to be fours and maybe fives, okay, as they come through. You just click on them, okay? Or, you know, if you see one, oh, no, she should be a one, boom. Okay, it's that easy. If you see somebody you want to delete, you just drop them in the trash can, okay? Easy. Once you're done, you don't need to save or anything. Now, some people, look, some of you guys are like me. I would get myself a nice adult beverage. I would put on a Frank Sinatra album and I would go through my entire list and rank them and not stop until I was done. That's the way I would do it. Some of you are like that. Some of you are like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed with that thought. So if that's overwhelming, then just do what I said. Just cherry pick the best people to start. If you're like me, it's okay to do that, to finish the setup and go through the whole list and really refine it. Okay. I'm also, we're in the process of moving. You guys are one of the last um, webinars from the world shed quarters, the Shafas. Those of you guys who know the story, because we're in escrow now, we'll be selling this home and moving. So um, next month, I will not be in the Shafas anymore. It'll be really sad. Some people have asked me if we're going to move it on a forklift, but we're leaving it behind. Okay. So when you're done, you can just navigate away, go back to your dashboard. So here's, here's what we're going to do. We're all set up. I'm going to give you a two cent tour of the dashboard and then we're gonna jump into our power hour. I'm gonna show you how incredibly easy this is to do. So here's your dashboard, a couple things. As you rank up, you can adjust that here, okay? Um, if you need to look somebody up that's not here on the dashboard, you just look them up right here. Put in a couple letters and, they, and it starts to populate. That'll take you to their contact record, okay? Um, and then you can also, if you meet somebody new, you're gonna add them to your list. You just click add contact, you put them right in. Simple, simple, simple. Also, you've got your settings up here. Okay, so that's the basics. Here's your why down here. And if you wanna edit that why, you just click on my why and it takes you back to that part of the wizard. Your left navigation's here. You can go to your team page where your whole list is. 
Um, your business page has some stats and cool stuff, and then universities where you get help. Okay, so now let's take a look at the dashboard and do our power hour. Today's activities, these are our goals for the day. We wanna connect with 10 prospects on our list. So you can see we've done zero. Six customers, four consultants. We wanna invite three people to the business and add three people to the list. You can see I added one person so far. All right, your dailies are just little accountability things. Did you post on social? Have you done your personal development work? Are you a product of the product? Are you using your stuff? Okay. So who's up next is the magic. This box right here, who's up next is the magic. It's gonna make you so efficient. There's nothing like this. There's no, nobody else has figured this out or copied it yet. I'm not gonna for now. But in your up next, you've got four lists, prospects, customers, consultants, and follow-ups, okay? Super easy. So when you come to do your power hour, you log on, you come into your Teamsy dashboard, and you start connecting with your prospects list. How many people do I need to connect with on this list? 10. Teamsy will show me five at a time so I don't get overwhelmed. But every time I connect, my list moves up, okay? So I'm gonna get five at a time until I get to my 10. So the first person on my list is Jay. So let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna connect with Jay. Now, I do 99% of my connecting through Facebook Messenger. I absolutely love Facebook Messenger. It's just my, and I know a lot of you guys use it too. Why do I love it? I love it because it's so easy for me to connect with somebody and meet them on Facebook because I don't have to get any contact info, but I can still video them, send them a message. I can call them on the phone. I can send them a text message and I can get to know them, right? How cool is that? The other thing, the reason I love Facebook Messenger is people respond really well at a really high rate to it. And they typically will look at my Facebook page while they're in a conversation with me, which engages with me at a deeper level. Does that make sense? Okay. So I've got, you can see in a separate tab, I have Facebook open. I'm gonna use that tab to connect with people, okay? Teamsy doesn't send Facebook messages. Facebook doesn't allow that, but it's gonna tell me who to connect with. So the first person on my list is Jay. Now, before I connect with Jay, I don't wanna to spend too much time in analysis paralysis trying to figure out who she is. Sometimes you don't even know who they are, right? When they come up on your list because it's a Facebook friend that you met and never connected with. I don't want to spend a lot of time figuring out what to say. So I'm going to go to script. See this button right here? To get a quick idea on a connect I can send. Okay? So these are the different types that we can send. I'm going to do Facebook. Okay? Great. So here's a connect one. Hi, Jane. Just stopping by to say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. This, by the way, is my favorite script of all time. For those of you guys who have very elaborate and deep scripts, I want you to know this one works amazing. I've probably sent this at least 3,000 times myself. It works amazing because what does it do? Its goal is to make their day, create a smile, and have them respond. That's it. So here's what I'm doing. Copy that script. Now it's on my clipboard. Close that out. Now when I go over here, I'm going to look up Jay. There she is. We're going to send her a message. Okay. Send Jay a message. She's sending me the same messages because she works for Teams. It's, it's a setup. It's a setup. All right. So look, I changed the name. Obviously, Jane is a placeholder name. I want to put the right name in. However, I have sent Jane to, to the wrong person before, which made a funny conversation. And you know what? I look at that as a success because all I want to do is start a conversation anyways. So watch. I'm going to send that message. Hi, Jay, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. Now, one thing you can do if you want, if you're like me and you're lazy about typing notes, I'm just going to copy that, toggle back to Teamsy. And now I'm going to log it. So my tracking will be done at the same time. Okay? Now, to log this, first I need to select what type of communication it was. So it was a Facebook message. And now I'm going to log it. See this big log connect button? Now watch what happens to my list, to my dashboard when I log it. So now Jay's off my list and Brittany's up. I've got a one on the scoreboard. Now I'm gonna to go to Brittany and I'm gonna do the same thing. In fact, I will very likely use that same connect 10 straight times in a row, just change the thing, bam, 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 bam. How fast do you think you could send those? Super fast, right? And you can upload your own um, scripts also. So if you wanna put your own little twist on that and make it sound more like you, you can totally do that. Or you can just use that one. So boom, 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 boom. I'm going to go 10 times. I'm going to send it to Brittany, send it to Andrew, send it to Danya, send it to Julie, send it to Matthew, all the way down until this shows me a 10 on the prospects column. Okay? When I'm done doing that, now I'm going to toggle to the next list, which is customers. Okay? 
and I'm going to do the same thing. So when I go to my scripts for red, now they're going to be customer scripts it's automatically switched, right? Customers, you know, ones. How are you enjoying the whatever they're getting? Send me an update. Let me know how I can be of help. This is my favorite. You guys want to see my, I'm going to give you my favorite script in every category. Do you want to know my favorite customer script of all time? Anyone want to know? Here it is. Hi, Jane. Just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day. Oh my gosh, so effective, so simple. You know why? Because the heart's in the right place. All right, so let me talk to you guys a minute about connecting with your customers. It's so important, so important. And I know a lot of you guys have a huge customer list and you're thinking, I have to be in touch with these people, but it's so important. From the standpoint of you're their consultant, right? They need, they have questions and they need your help. So they need you to be available to them. A lot of times they won't reach out to you. So if you're reaching out to them, it's, it's a proactive opportunity to serve them. And I know a lot of you guys have that heart to serve and help people, right? From a business perspective, don't you want your customers to continue using the products forever? Yes, right? But typically people will cancel after a certain period of time. Most people will. The chances in them canceling is much lower if you're in consistent contact with them. So there's the number one reason to do it. Teams, he's just going to bring them up, boom, send them a message, stay in contact with them. Okay. Also, as you're in contact with people and start getting questions, they'll typically order more. They'll get more stuff. They'll ask you about more stuff because they're getting results with what they have. So it's, those are two great reasons to be in contact with the customers. You will be creating more volume for your business that way. Now, the most important reason to be in contact with your customers some of you, this is obvious, but you should all pick up your pen and get ready to write this one down. There is no hotter source for a new lead than a current customer. A current customer is your hottest source for a new lead. There's nothing better in any business, not just this business. Somebody who is using the products and enjoying them and getting a great result is already talking about them to everybody they know. Isn't that how a lot of you got into this business? It's already happening. You don't even have to create that energy. It's already, they're already, you look amazing. What are you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm doing Rodan and Fields. They're already talking about it. The question is, are you in contact with them to steer those conversations back to you? Right? You need to be in contact with them. And here's just one thing I do. I promise I will do a full training on this soon on how to actually go about duplicating your current customers, but I'm just going to give you this tip. You guys can figure it out. The key is not to ask people to refer you. The key is to ask people to introduce you to the people they're already talking to. Get them to introduce you on a group text, a group chat, a group email, so that you can bring them more information. Okay. Are you with me? And when those friends are interested, you go back to that originally person and say, all your friends are interested. This is a great opportunity for you to become a consultant. Okay, sorry. You can see how I could build that for an hour. That's such a fun thing to talk about, but you just need to be in constant contact with your customers. So let's go back to that list. I know you guys get this, I see the nods. So you're gonna go through your customers and you're just gonna stay in contact with them the same way. Just send them a quick message. Hey, I was thinking about you. How are you? How's, how's everything going? Are you enjoying the products? Are you using them? Do you have any questions for me? Just, just a quick, quick, quick connect. And when I get down to six people on my list, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm done with that list and I go to my next list, which is my team. Guess what? This is why it's called Teamsy. It's all about your team. There's nothing more important than your team. And your consultants, just like your customers, just like your prospects, your relationships, they need to hear from you one-on-one. -on -one. They need that connection with you. And I don't care how big your business is and how impossible you think that is. With a tool like this, you can do it. A couple times a year, they should get a message from you. Hey, how are you? What's going on? Is there anything I can do for you today? It will make the difference in your business. Okay, so when we've done four consultants, we've connected with them, one, two, three, four. Now we've got our three main categories done. We've connected with prospects, customers, and consultants. In this example, it's 20 people. Honestly, even a beginner can get that done in 25 minutes. Now people will start responding to you almost immediately. And typically I found the response rate to be about 50%, which is higher than any type of communication you can imagine. So 
be disciplined. Don't start answering those responses until you're done with your outgoing stuff. Okay, you can get it done quickly and then you can start having those responses. So people are responding to you and they're saying, oh my gosh, thanks for reaching out. I'm doing great, how are you, right? And now you're gonna start having conversation. You'll be messaging back and forth. A lot of times you'll be having little conversations all the time. If you're doing your Teams every morning, for example, you're creating, in this example, you're creating 10 conversations every single day. And those conversations may span over a few days. But how fun is that to have that much momentum in your business? So you're having these conversations and the goal of the conversations, guys, this is super important, isn't to, con isn't to recruit and it isn't to sell. The goal, of, remember, this is about a philosophy of relationship marketing. The goal of the conversation is to find, is to identify wants and needs and help that person. Now, a lot of times, those wants and needs will lead back to the business opportunity or to the products that you represent, which is awesome because that's, cl that's clear. But a lot of times, it's, that relationship's not ready yet to be invited to the business, but they need to know that you care about them and that you're willing to help them in any way you can so that relationship becomes warmer because you're going to come back to them again in a couple months on the Teamsy list. Some of these people you're going to touch several times over a period of time while they're incubating. Does that make sense? Okay, so we've got one more list in our power hour and that's follow-ups. So how do you get me on the follow-up list? I'm gonna show you that in a second. But first, I just wanna talk to you guys real quick about follow-ups. Have you guys heard this statistic? That's that 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and the 10th follow-up. Have you guys heard that or something like that? Yeah, 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and the 10th follow-up. And I saw a lot of you guys nodding, so you know this. So here's the question I have for you. How many of you follow up 10 times on the same person? <laughs> Couple people. How many would say seven times, maybe? Okay, don't feel bad. I Very rarely do I talk to a team where I see more than one or two hands. Usually they're little team leaders. And I understand why you don't follow up. I mean, first of all, how many of you guys have a system like the one I'm showing you already in your business? So I understand it's really hard to be organized enough to follow up 10 times on somebody when you're using five different notebooks or whatever you might be using in your business, right? I mean, there's just, you can only just be, your system, it depends on everything. But I think the main reason you're not doing it is because you feel like that would be annoying. Like you'd be a pest, right? You don't want to come across that way. How many of you guys feel that way? Okay. I'm, I'm the same way. Just so you guys know, the first time I was asked to go for no, I, I wanted to hide under my desk in the fetal position. That's when I was like, that's just not my approach. That's why I'm here telling you guys there's another way to do it. But you do need to follow up because the fortune is in the follow-up and 80% of your sales won't happen until after the seventh follow-up. Okay, so how do you do it? So a couple of things. First, I'm gonna teach you in a second two principles that will help you follow up without ever being annoying. You guys down for that? And then I'll show you that you don't even have to understand those because Teamsy will do it automatically for you. I'll show you how that works. But first and foremost, you need a mindset shift. And that's this. Somebody comes to you for help. For help, let's say, with their skin, right? It's their, the mirror, their mirror to the world, right? How important is that to you as a person? It's huge. And they might have some worries. It might be cost. It might be commitment. I don't know. Or they come to you for the business opportunity, which can transform their entire life right? And they've been interested. They're interested. You've invited them now. They're interested. And then like they disappear. Have you found out Like you're following up with them and they're just gone where that they're hiding? Here's what you guys need to understand. Human beings do not like change. Is that true? You guys know that, that your subconscious mind rules you, that 80, more than 80% of all your actions come from your subconscious, not your conscious mind. Have you guys heard that before? Yeah. So you're talking to somebody, a prospect, and they're interested. They're excited, and then they disappear. Why is that? Because they were excited with the 20% of their brain. Their conscious mind was excited. Their subconscious mind is going, oh, that sounds like work and change. No way, Jose. This is the way people are wired. This is the psychology of every single human being, you guys. So understanding that people come to you for help, to really help them, you have to help them get past the programming they already have that's holding them in place. 
And the only way you're going to do that is by following up. So here's what that means, guys. Write this down. Following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. Some of you need to write that and put it on a little sticky note, put it on your computer screen to remind yourself. Not following up, failing to follow up is communicating, you know what? I just didn't care enough about you to follow up, sorry. I know it's harsh, but it's true. Following up is an act of love. Now here's the thing. Two ways to follow up without ever being annoying. Are you ready? And some of you guys, I want you to know, you will try this out on your spouse and you'll be amazed that it works with them too. The first principle for following up without being annoying is this. Never, ever ask someone to do anything in your follow-up. Don't give them an action step. Don't ask them to call you back. Don't ask them to text you. Don't ask them to respond to your email. Don't ask them to hurry up and buy the product already. Don't tell them, just tell me if you're interested or not so I can move on. Like, Don't ask them to do anything in the follow-up. Okay, that's the first principle. You guys got that? Because as soon as you ask them to do something and they're trying to avoid you, remember subconsciously, you're annoying. The second thing is make your follow-up message so short that they can read it on their notification screen without opening the message. Because they don't want you to know they've read it. <laughs> right? Aren't you the same way sometimes? I really want to see this message, but I'm not prepared to respond to it right now. So I don't want to open it because they'll see the open receipt and then think I'm a jerk. So keep it short and sweet so they can get most of it without opening it. Okay, now if you do that, what happens is your follow-ups become a reminder of that hopeful feeling they had when they talked to you the first time instead of a nag. Your follow-ups are a momentary like reconnect to that hopeful moment. And what we're doing with our follow-ups literally is reprogramming the subconscious mind to be okay with the change that's about to happen. Are you guys with me? You didn't know this was going to be some deep philosophical training tonight, right? You thought that some nerd was just going to show you software. Sorry. Sorry. We're, we're a little deeper than that at Teamsy. Okay. So let me show you how this works in Teamsy because the nerds, the software nerds did make this really easy. Let me go in here and show you how this works. So we messaged Jay. We sent Jay a great message. Now Jay responds and we're having a conversation. We're getting caught up, right? Getting caught up in her life, my life, whatever we're talking. And we get, we get into the um, conversation about the products. And um, she's intrigued. By the way, Jay, Jay works for TMZ. She's, she's our director of um, customer experience. So, but I use her as my example. But honestly, like Jay is completely obsessed with Lash Boost. That's a true story. So, for example, let's say we're talking about it and she's like, you know, um, I just really need to get it already. I'm, I'm obsessed with it, whatever. It's like, great, awesome. Well, here's what I'm going to do, Jay. I'm going to send you um, some links so that you can take a look at it and get it ordered and everything. And then I'll check in with you tomorrow and see if you have any questions. Sound good? Right? So now what happens is, I'm going to, we've had this great conversation and now I'm going to look Jay up and I'm going to log that I sent her an invite of some sort. Okay, so let me just look her up. There she is. I got two of them, so that made it really confusing. Hold on a second, let me get rid of my duplicate. There she is. Do that again. That brings me to her contact record, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this connect button to log this connect. And um, let's say she was interested in Lash Boost. I just want to give myself a note. So, oh, excuse me, Teensy. Yes, that's more correct. Okay, great. And then I'm going to select my type. So it was via, um, I sent her an email, right? And so see this little box right here where it says invite? This is the key piece. Can you guys see that? I'm kind of circling it. I'm going to click it. Now this is not just a regular connect, but it's an invite. This is not just a, I want to make your day, but I'm actually now we're sending something out that I need to follow up on, okay? What type was that? There's a few choices. So I've got solution tool, three-way call, a consultation, an event, a BBL, opportunity call, or, or other, right? So let's say I send her a solution tool as an example, okay? Now, J is a four, which means she's gonna come back on my dashboard in 60 days, but I told her I'd check in with her tomorrow, right? So I need to set that follow-up. So see where it says follow-up default? I'm gonna to toggle that down. And I'm gonna set it for tomorrow. 
Now when I log that connect, it's logged the invite and it's put her on my follow-up list for tomorrow. Okay, this is how people move to the follow-up list. You're connecting, 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 and as they're interested or you have a reason to follow up, you set them on your follow-up list. So now when I go back to do my power hour tomorrow, I'm gonna connect with 10 prospects, six customers, four consultants, and then I'm gonna work my follow-ups list. There's Jay on my follow-ups list for tomorrow, okay? So what I'll do is when I get to my follow-ups list, I'm just gonna work down the list and I'm gonna send people the next follow-up. So let me show you how this works. We actually put 10 follow-ups in Teamsy for you. So you guys can literally just copy and paste 10 times if you want, or you can write your own, you can write whatever message you want. So let me show you how this works. I'm just gonna go into scripts again. And I'll, I'll do Facebook Messenger because that's how we started. There's follow-up number one. Okay, so here's follow-up num number one. Hi, Jane. Just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Okay. I haven't asked her to do anything, and I kept it short and sweet, right? And I'm, I am communicating to her that I care about her, and it's all about her. Okay? So I'm going to copy that one. Boom. And I'll send it to her on Facebook, right? And then I'll copy it here. I'll paste it in here. Record it. That was Facebook message. Now, I'm going to set my next follow-up. This is key. Make sure you get this part. Always set the next follow-up when you log a follow-up so that she stays on your follow-ups list. I do not want her to fall off my list. Okay, so I'm gonna log that one and now she'll be on my list again the next day. So the next day when I come through and do my power hour and I come back and I'm working down my follow-ups list, I go to Jay again. Maybe I, maybe I have 50 follow-ups that I'm working and I don't remember where we are in the chain. I can click on activity and see what my last message was. Okay, there it was, great. I'm gonna go back to connect. Now I'm gonna to go to my scripts. I'm gonna get follow-up number two. Hi Jane, just make sure you got my email and check in to see if you have any questions. I got a little typo there, I just fixed that when you do it, okay? Follow-up number three. Hi Jane, I'm excited about the goals we discussed. Can't wait to get started. Follow-up number four. Hi Jane, just staying in touch so I can help you achieve your goals. Follow-up number five. Hi Jane, I hope you're doing well. I'm here when you're ready. Follow-up number six. Hi Jane, I know you were excited about getting started and I promise to be here to help you along the way. Do you have any questions for me? Now, guys, I went through those really quick. I hope you understand that those would be a day or two in between each one, right? And we're sending them and, and keeping them on our list. But why did I bang through six really quick? Because you need to understand that the vast majority of people will not even respond to your first six. Is that true? Yeah, so guess what? There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with them. That's just normal. And, and it's what we talked about. It's that subconscious mind finding reasons why they shouldn't change. Now, what will happen around the seventh follow-up is you will get a message back that says, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. You're so awesome. Thank you for staying in touch with me. I really appreciate it. I've been meaning to look at your email, which I haven't even looked at yet, right? But, and they'll give you all the reasons they've told themselves they can't do it today. The dog threw up. My baby was sick. The we got in a car accident, right? Work's been crazy. We've been on vacation. Whatever it is, they'll unload all of those reasons that they've used to justify the fact they haven't done it, and that is normal. And this is where the real follow-ups will start, is around six. It's like, oh, that's cool. We'll check it out, and we'll see if you have any questions. And you just keep doing it. You just keep connecting. You, have, you sit down and worry about you. <laughs> oh, that scared me. I jumped out of my skin. <laughs> I thought I was in trouble. All right, <laughs> Whew. give me a little adrenaline boost, it's good. All right, so um, you guys get the idea. So we're gonna connect, 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 follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, and we, can, we, we follow those principles. We don't be annoying, we just be loving. We just keep connecting them to that hope that we had that first conversation. Then what happens? What happens is, in this example, let's say Jay goes through and I see in the back office that she has purchased her, she purchased her whole deal. She came in as a consultant. She purchased a whole bunch of stuff. She did it. So how do I move her over in the program? Let me show you how to do that real quick. We'll finish her off. So what I would do is I would, you know, I would come into Teamsy and be like, okay, well, let me just now move her over. I'm going to look her up again. And now what I'll do is I'm going to process the sale first. So I'm just going to put in that she did an enrollment kit. Okay. And that's just so that my statistics know that my connects resulted in a sale. 
Now what I'll do is she's a prospect, but I'm going to move her to consultant just by clicking on this. See member type? I'm just going to click on consultant. Now it's moved her from the prospect list to the consultant list, and she's personally sponsored. Okay? So now I've completed her. Now I will continue to connect with Jay, but from now on, she's going to show up on this consultant's tab instead of my prospect's tab. Pretty cool, right? Now, if for some reason Jay decides she's not ready and she's not going to purchase yet or whatever, no big deal. I just set her follow-up to default and I, she goes back in my Teamsy list and I'm going to connect with her down the road, but she'll never fall through the cracks. She'll always be on my connects list. So in a month or two, she'll come back up and I'll be like, hey, Jay, how have you been? It's been a while since we last connected. What are you up to? And we'll just start the process over. In which case, she may be like, hey, I really am ready now to get started. Make sense? So I know I told you, I know I gave you guys a ton of stuff. And um, so I'm going to stop because I could keep going all night. But if you have questions and you want to ask them live, go ahead and just unmute and ask the questions. Um, I, I have a question, Eric. For the scripts that you can click on, mm -hmm. it can you click on the actual script before you like send it and add to that particular script to personalize it? Or do you have to create your own personalized message if you don't want to use one of the scripts? Well, you got a couple of options. You can, you can save that script as, as a new script and rewrite it and save it in scripts so it's there when you want it if you want to use it multiple times, or when you paste it into Messenger or whatever, you can edit it there before you send it. Okay. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So let me show you guys how to put your own script in. It's really easy. So when you click on scripts, you just click this new script, okay? And you can put your own in. And just one thing I want you guys to make sure you know when you create your own scripts is you need to put these tags in. You need to tag what they are. They're for prospect and they're for Facebook so that they show up at the right time when you need them, okay? Okay, so you can put in your own script. Another thing that's really cool that I didn't even talk to you guys about is you can send emails directly through Teamsy by clicking on this send email once you set it up with your Gmail account. So you can send emails directly and they'll be logged, which is kind of cool. Someone's asking, Laura is asking, well, one of the Lauras, <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Um, it's the real Laura. Do you remember? Real Laura Sika. <laughs> what do you do with your Facebook list if many are already consultants? Do you clean your Facebook account first and import? I don't recommend doing any cleanups to your Facebook account before importing it because it's going to be easier to clean it up in Teamsy than it would be on a spreadsheet for sure. But here's the thing: if you put your consultant list in Teamsy first. Then you bring in your Facebook friends. It's not going to bring people in that have the same name again. Oh, man. I wish I'd have known that. So if you do that first, it won't happen. Now, <laughs> some people will still show up because they've got their maiden name in Facebook and they don't have it in Pulse, right? So teams will think, well, that's a new person. And you'll just need to click the trash can to delete that extra one. Um, but um, let me show you guys how to clean up your list really fast. Um, if people showed up on the wrong list, let me show you really quick. It's actually quite easy. So you're going to go to your team page where your full list is, right? And let's say I'm in my all list. Now what I'm going to do is see this type mode right here? I'm going to toggle that. And now I can go down my list and I can go, oh, no, she's a consultant. Right? Oh, she's, you know, so if you need to move people over to the consultant list, you can. Or... If you don't want them on your list because they're a consultant and they're not like your team and you just don't want them, then you can just delete them, right? The other thing though that is cool is, let's say I come into um, Christine and she's a consultant, but she's like a sideline sister, right? Or a crossline sister, however you guys want to say it. So what I'll do first is I'll move her to consultant and then I can put her on fellow team, which is like sideline. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that help? So, but for those of you guys who are setting up Teamsy, and the setup wizard tells you this too, this is the order you want to do it in. You want to do your consultants first, then your customers, then Facebook. Okay? That'll just minimize the cleanup work. 
But if I already but if I already downloaded uh, the other Laura number two, if I already down uh, imported my Facebook because I did that first actually my husband did that for me I didn't realize it, but I haven't down put in my um my uh, pulse report. Will that? So what do I do now? <laughs> okay, so Rochelle, you can do easily. What do I do now? <laughs> you can redo it. If you haven't done a lot of Teamsy Connects already, mm -hmm. if you redo it though, it will erase all of the- I haven't done much of anything. I was waiting for tonight. I okay, was just so then it's easy. to come with a knowledge of what this was. I didn't want to just come without having tried it, you know, played okay. with it. So if you haven't logged a lot of data, you can redo it. It's really easy. Let me show you how to do it. Okay. And if you forget what I'm about to show you, just send a help ticket by clicking that purple help button in Teamsy. <laughs> And the team will help you do it really fast. But I don't know, watch gonna... this recording about a hundred times is what's <laughs> going to be happening. <laughs> okay, so this is how we redo it, um, Rochelle. You're going to go to your team page, right? And mm -hmm. see where it says import. We're going to toggle that and we're going to go to import history. So now I can find my, my friends.htm. That's my Facebook import. I can just delete it. Okay? Start over. And then what oh, is in that person? That deletes it completely, and then then you can delete your uh, oh. your downline report. Hey, Miranda, you got unmuted again. I don't know how you keep getting unmuted, girl. I'm sorry. I got her. There. Okay, so um, so you can delete your imports and re-import them in the right order, and that'll that'll minimize your duplicates. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Um, okay, so I also got this question, which is, um, if you already have Teams, you didn't go through setup, how do you go back and do it? You go to this little, oh wait, I'm not sharing my screen. Hold on, you guys have good imaginations, but not that good. You go to this little wheel right here, the settings wheel, and you launch setup wizard. Okay, that's it. That's how you can get to that setup wizard at any time. Now, the other thing you can Eric, do. Eric, where was that wheel? Oh, I didn't see it. Right up here in the top right, See where it says feedback, just to the right. Oh, of it. I'm. Um, oh, okay. We we had the the. Yeah. The, we were in front of that. <laughs> oh yeah, because the yeah the zoom view. Okay. Yeah. Now the other thing is, notice this tab right here, university guys. If you go in here, you've got. Look at all these different things you've got. All these questions. Somebody just asked, "How do you get your um, smartphone contacts into Teams?" There it is, right there. Bam. Here's the instructions, okay? They're right here under university. Um, so there's all kinds of different questions you can do. How do you go, into, how do you get your pulse done? So like, where, where is that? So here's all the instructions on how to do pulse. Like they're just written out for you too. And then also going back to that, You've got over here, training and education videos. You've got some cool videos that you can share with your team, things like that, different things um, that you can do. So there's some great stuff. How to delete an entire import. There it is. There's the what I just showed you. Wow. Okay. So use that university tab too to help you. And then if, if you ever need help, of course, there's that purple help button on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen that's always floating around. You just click that and send a ticket in, and then the team will get right back to you. Okay, I'm just gonna see people are writing questions over here. Um, is there a limit to the number of people you can add? No, there's not. So you know, everything's on enterprise servers. So I think we somebody put in like 25,000 people. Ooh. So depending yeah. on how big you're, you're fine. You should be fine. And you can still, it won't, it won't impact the performance, your load times or anything like that. It'll, it'll be super fast. And then Eric, you said that it, you can log in on your cell phone too to Teamsy. That so was can... my next question. Was there an app link or something? Let me show you how that works. Hold on a second. You're thinking alike, Miss Laura. I'm just gonna. I can on Gmail. I can kind of. Um, I'm sorry. On Chrome, I can kind of impersonate what it looks like. Here we go. So there's not an app. It's just a mobile website. Okay. Wait. Where's Chrome? It is. So this is what it looks like on your phone. 
it's a mobile website. So if you're on an Android phone, it's, it's in Chrome. And if you are on an iPhone, it's in Safari. And the website is app.teamz.com, app.teamz.com. It's the same website you log into actually on your computer too. Okay. So once you log in, you can save it to your dashboard or to your home screen on your phone. So you have that icon, you can jump to it anytime. And this is, you, you can do everything that you can do that you want to do on your computer. You can do mobile for the most part. You can look people up, right? You can connect with them. I can, I can delete them. I can change their rank, right? I can log a sale. I can connect. I can go to scripts. Right, I can get, take the script, I can copy the script, then I would toggle over to Facebook Messenger or whatever text and send it. You guys with me? You can do all this, it's so cool. So once you get it set up, you have to have a computer to do your setup, okay? But once you have it set up, you can, you can work on it mobile, which means if you don't even have your power hour to do it, you can do 15 minute increments. You know, you can connect with people when you're waiting in line to pick your kids up from school, whatever. It's really cool. So you can use that gap time to your benefit. Okay, I just pulled it up on my phone and you said you can, what did you say to do so that you could access it quickly? You can save it to your home screen. So are you yeah. on an iPhone? Uh-huh. Okay, so just touch the middle of Teamsy and you'll see like a little menu pop up and there's a picture. It looks like a rectangle with an arrow pointing out of it. You see that? Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Hold on a second, let me get my phone up. So make sure I'm on speaker view so that I have a big screen for you. Okay. So can you see that? Now see the little menu bar at the bottom of the screen? Yes, it gets after you've logged in? Yeah. Okay, that's what I didn't do. I didn't do the whole process, okay. If you're not logged in, it, it'll still work because basically if you touch your screen, then Apple, puts their little menu bar at the bottom. Sometimes it goes away. Like, see, it's gone. But when I touch the screen a little bit, or pull the screen down a little bit, that menu bar shows up on the bottom. You see that? That's Apple's Safari menu bar. So that button in the middle, that little rectangle with the triangle sticking out, I'm gonna to touch that. And that gives me these options. And one of them is add to home screen. Oh. Put the icon right on your home screen. Okay. Make sure you guys check that box that says, remember me when you log in so that you're not constantly logged in. Can you do that on the Samsung phones too or no? Yeah, you're just gonna use Google Chrome. Okay. Or, right, isn't that what they use? Google Chrome for, for internet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same website for every phone, app.tmz.com. Okay, uh, let's see. Someone's asking, can you um, change your goals? Yeah, there's actually a link at the top of your home screen of your dashboard that says um, change daily activity goals, daily goals. You just click that to change those goals as you go. Um, someone's having trouble importing contacts from Facebook. Just click that help button and send a ticket. The team will help you do it. We'll get it done in one day. Okay. And Eric, can you um, talk about what you guys do as far as webinars? Where do you find that information as far as ongoing? I know you've got articles in there, but what um, I've seen like different things on Facebook about uh, different webinars and things like that. Where do we find that in one central place? We, we do a webinar. We'll do um, Rodan and Field specific webinar twice a month. Okay. And the goal is to help onboard all the new people that are coming in. Um, and usually we will, we will email that link out to people that are, that are 60 days or less in the, in the program. So once you guys are in it for a while, you may not be getting invitations because it's kind of like the intro webinar. Um, and there is one saved always inside the university. Someone could just go watch it anytime. Um, okay. And that's the how to slay your business in less than an hour a day webinar. Um, so, but also we, we will do, I mean, obviously we're doing it for you guys. We'll do team calls for any team. You know, if a team can bring more than 25 people, we'll do specific team calls where we go a lot deeper than we would on a webinar. Um, sometimes we get, I mean, the best part about the webinar is the questions, right? I, I know we've done, we've had some of our biggest ones with Rodana Fields. I and mean, we had one with like 980 people on one webinar, which was pretty awesome when we launched. 
So we love you guys. You guys are, are so much fun for us <laughs> because of all the networks we've worked with, we're, we're working with seven networks now. I think Rudana Fields consultants understand the value of this quicker and really have leveraged it faster. So um, I, I would not be lying to you to tell you that in, our, in my meetings with my partners, they're always asking, how do we find the next Rudan and Fields? And I just don't know if, I don't know if we ever will, which is a compliment to you guys, but um, awesome. so we're grateful to you guys. We're excited to be part of your culture to help you guys be successful. If that makes sense. Oh, I, I didn't give you action steps. Oh my gosh. I lost people, sorry. Okay, so share these action steps with everybody real quick um, that's not here. You gotta have a couple action steps, right? Oh wait, I already did this one. I'm a coach after all. First one is get your 30 day free trial. That's a no brainer. Go to teamsy.com, get your 30 day free trial, okay? And then choose a 30 day success partner to do the trial with you. So if you already have a success partner, use that person. But if you don't have one, pick one for 30 days to do the trial with you, okay? And you wanna find somebody, the rank, isn't as important as having an equal amount of ambition and um, enthusiasm, okay? So pick somebody that you think kind of matches you in ambition and enthusiasm and say, will you be my 30-day success partner to do this trial with me? What I want you to do with your success partner is at the end of each day, take a screenshot of your completed TeamZ dashboard and send it to them. Just text it to them, message it to them. Okay, that'll hold each other accountable to doing it. Okay, and the third action step, third thing I want you to do is I'm, I'm gonna give you a five-day challenge as well. So during your 30-day free trial, I want you to take my five-day challenge, which is in five consecutive days, five days in a row, I want you to connect, connect with 100 people, okay, which is just an average of 20 a day. But I want you to do it for five straight days. It can be any combination of prospects, customers, and consultants, but I just want you to connect with 20 people minimum every day for five straight days. Okay, because I want you to experience the momentum that you can create in your business when you're doing that. Okay, so who's up for the five-day challenge? Mm, awesome. Good. See the hands, hold them accountable. To it. Hold them accountable to it. Okay. Awesome. Okay, guys. Awesome. Thank I you so I much. You on here a long time. Ooh. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Hopefully, did you find some value in this presentation tonight? Oh yes. my gosh! Yes. 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 It was awesome. Thank you, Eric, for your time. My pleasure, you guys. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank and you. Have a great night, everyone. Yeah. And Bye, everybody. Go get some Teamsy done. I'll send hey, you, you, you guys the, uh, the video. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to go, go put a post in our team about take your takeaways from tonight. Laura, you might want to do the same because I want to hear what y'all got from tonight. I'm going to post right now. Awesome. Awesome. Have a great night, you guys. Right. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.